Hey guys, welcome back to the Vintage Television Alignment Series. This time we're going to be talking about sound. In particular for an Admiral 20B1 chassis that has a split carrier. Right after the tuner, video goes one way, audio goes another. And this uses 21.25 megahertz for the sound carrier, and that is FM. So previously we aligned the wide response for the AM modulated video. Now we have a much narrower response for the FM modulated audio. This is going to be just like aligning an FM radio with a 10.7 megahertz IF. But in this case it's 21.25 and I want to point out that this is particular to this type of chassis. This is certainly not the only way to do sound, and certainly not the only way to do sound in early TVs. There were inner carrier sets that used 4.5 megahertz, which became the standard for many years thereafter. There's also more than one way to convert FM to audio. This uses a ratio detector. You can also do it with a discriminator, I think, Foster Sealy, something like that, that RCA used on early sets because they were in a uh, patent dispute with Armstrong. I think that's how it goes. So for the early RCA sets, they used not the greatest circuit, but they were trying to avoid having to pay royalties or get into a legal bind. Uh, and then later sets used a gated beam type system which we uh, will talk about when we do a predictor because they used it as well. It's something Zenith invented. Let's review the sound steps. Steps one, two, three. Step one's a little different. Step one is we're adjusting a trap. It traps the sound from getting into the video. Two separate IFs, we want to make sure we don't get bleeding from one to the other. So there's an LC resonance circuit tuned to 2125 that shunts that signal to ground before it goes into the video amp, and that is what A1 is for. So we want to adjust A1 for a minimum. Everything up till now has been maximum. This is a minimum. And you're going to want to increase your RF generator to be put out a pretty strong output. And uh really hone in on that. They show that on the response curve here where it goes to ground at 2125. For the others, A2, A3, A4, we're going to uh, peak it for a maximum. The diagram over here, A1 is actually on the input to the video IF. Again, we don't want sound getting into that. The top is the audio IF and we have a2, A3, A4, all for max. Now, one thing that varies a little bit between the steps is where you connect your meter. For step one, where we're doing A1 to a minimum, instead of going to our RC combo, they say to go to point X, which is directly on the grid. I think that's because they want to uh, get the most sensitive part of the circuit. Um... And then for peaking it, we go to point Y, which is up here. So this uses a ratio detector. That is a particular kind of circuit for detecting FM sound that you see in a lot of early TVs. And this is the classic way to do it is a 6AL5 dual diode. And at some point, it's going to have two identical value resistors with an electrolytic capacitor across them. So point Y is the positive side of that electrolytic. And later on, we're going to connect to point V. Maybe if you've ever seen this, wonder why the heck are there two equal valued resistors connected in series with nothing in the middle? Because when you align it, you want that point. That is key to aligning this. If you've ever done FM sound on a radio with a ratio detector, this should all make some sense to you. This, uh, I do recommend a VTVM, if at all possible, for step three. Because we're going to adjust this... Uh, meter in a rather unique way uh, it's a lot easier to do with a VTVM versus a scope or a digital multimeter all right uh, let's get everything warmed up I'm just going to use my Hewlett Packard 
RF generator, but again, anything. Unmodulated 21.25 megahertz. Tiny SA, by all means use a vintage two-based RF generator. Don't need anything fancy as long as you can get into the ballpark of 21.25 with no modulation and you control the output level, you should be good to go. Oh, uh, don't think I showed this. So, my RF generator, uh, I have a 50 ohm generator. It's going into a 50 ohm bit of coax and on the end of it I have alligator clips. I put a resistor across them. Just tack soldered it to both clips on this. That's to terminate it. Ideally it'd be 50 ohms. I have 47. That's the closest I had on hand. It's fairly close. Ideally you would have a 50 ohm non-inductive load. That is to terminate it. You want to have a constant 50 ohm impedance or whatever your RF generator happens to be if it's 75 ohms or whatever. Uh, you need this in order for it to work properly, especially one that has an output meter. So when it says plus 5 dBm, that's plus 5 dBm into a terminated 50 ohm load. If you don't terminate it, your output level can kind of wander all over. It's just not so good for the generator either because you can get um, reflections going back into it. I think that's how that goes. All right, so I'm going to... Hook this up, allow things to warm up, and then we shall proceed. Here's a look at the transformers we will be adjusting. It's these big guys, generally the sound transformers are bigger than the video transformers. These both have slugs at the top and the bottom. We're going to be adjusting both sides. This primary secondary for the IF, primary of sorts for the IF, and then there's a ratio detector in there. So that transformer's a bit more complicated as shown on here where there's actually three coils inside. Now notice there are capacitors inside those cans, a 30 and a 35. These sets are prone to silver mica disease. So I have already opened these up and replaced those caps with mica. So that's another reason why I really need to align the sound on this is because I installed new caps that I'm sure are slightly different than the ones that were in there. The other reason why you commonly need to tweak the sound alignment on split carrier sets is over time the sound and the video IFs can vary a little bit and you can't get the best picture with the best sound at the same point in the fine tuning. This will help with that. All right, uh, things are warmed up. Let's get to adjusting the A1 trap. Okay, here we go. I have plus 5 dBm. I have a much, much stronger signal going into the set than when I was peaking circuits. Now I want to adjust this so that needle goes down towards zero. Here we go, adjusting A1. go that way. That was off a bit. So as usual we want to rock that core back and forth. Home in on the minimum which is right about there. Two things to be aware of. We are moving our VTVM connection now to the positive side of an electrolytic cap. The voltage we're going to be Measuring is going to be positive, whereas the previous voltage was negative. Change your meter to be plus volts. Two, remember to turn down your RF generator. It's going to be a very, very strong signal at this point. So maybe uh, minus 30 dBm. Good enough. All right, so now we peak. First, a two on top of the transformer. too far off. Alright. Alrighty, here's a four. That was off a bit. Alright, that's easy enough. Now comes the fun part. I say fun because we're going to do this in two ways. So those of you who have aligned an FM radio may know what I'm talking about. This 
particular type of FM detector, we're going to want to adjust it so as the frequency goes a little bit below or a little bit above 21.25, the meter swings negative or positive. And right at 21.25, the voltage should be zero. We're also going to sweep it to verify that. So this is what we want, an S-curve. And ideally, in this portion, which is our FM bandwidth, it's linear and, most importantly, symmetrical. Because this is, as our sound varies, the frequency is going to slide back and forth, centered around this point. And that's how we go from frequencies changing to audio level changing. Most VTVMs have an indicator of zero right in the middle of the meter face. So you ground your input, take your meter adjust knob, and put that on zero. Now we're going to connect the VTVM to a point in that FM detector circuit, such that when we go a little bit above or below our center frequency of 2125, the needle's going to swing left it's going to swing right. And right at 2125, it should be dead in the center. You can do it on your v uh, digital multimeter or scope. At 2125, you want to have zero volts, and above or below, you want to have plus or minus. And it should be plus or minus the same amount. Like plus one volt one way, minus one volt the other way. And the frequencies they said to go between are 21.05 and 21.45. Alright, well, I am off a little bit, aren't I? Should be dead center, 21.25. This is a rather touchy adjustment. And this is what it should do. It should swing back and forth very smoothly. Right on zero. Now if I go slightly above with the frequency, say 21.3, it should go one way. Okay, and if I go the other way, say 21.20, Excellent, excellent. And now let's verify that with the sleep generator. Here is the resulting response curve. I'm sweeping it with my WaveTech 1080 with the center frequency of about 21.25 megahertz, sweep width of about one megahertz, and I have a programmable marker at 21.25. That's that weird squiggle in the middle. So that's right where it should be, in the middle. Now that's Put that marker at the two extremes, 2105. Excellent, down there just inside, just like they show on the diagram. And 2145, fantastic. Now ideally, this would be perfectly symmetrical. In the real world, that's not gonna happen. Plus this is a TV, it's not uh, some super high-end stereo system. So <laughs> as far as S response curves, which is the nickname for this, this is really good. The key being you want that zero crossover point to be your sound IF frequency, and you want this to be fairly linear, and you want it to be fairly symmetrical. I think we're gonna get really good sound with this. So uh, that's going to be it for sound alignment for this type of ratio detector. Uh, I will demonstrate the gated beam using a 6BN6 type tube in a later video. I can test the sound very easily with my setup here by simply enabling FM modulation on my signal generator turn the volume up and there we go that is one kilohertz and that is 400 hertz all right next up 
we will align the tuner, which I do not recommend unless you absolutely know there's an issue with it or you're up to doing some experimenting and uh, aren't concerned about potentially damaging it. Uh, and then we will check the overall response from the antenna terminals all the way to the front end and then actually look at the screen and see how well we did by showing some test patterns and some actual programming material. Be looking forward to that in the next installment. As always, thanks for watching and I look forward to your comments, thoughts, and suggestions.